Amen. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite the brethren to open our Bibles in the book of Luke, chapter 2. Uh, I have a vo hoarse voice. I'm going to ask the children and, t and intermediary to read with me and the adolescents, right? They're going to read first in Portuguese or English. Which one do you choose? In English? But Elias only has in Spanish. Oh, yeah, only uh, yeah, we have in English here. <laughs> Go read there on the screen. Amen. So the children, intermediary, and adolescents, from verse 8, from 8 to 14. Amen. So now go strong. Now, they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the seed of David uh, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in heaven, in, in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. The church may be seated. Do we have a song here? Nope. My bread in the church. It lives in our days. 
the moment that is most awaited of all time. This moment which we live today is a prophetic moment. And this moment is being awaited and it's being followed by all of those who know the word of the Lord. If we could give a name to this moment, if we could name the time which we live today, the Bible in Revelations make mentions of a time, make mention of a time. And the Bible it named this time as the time called soon. Why? Because on the time called soon is the time in which we do not measure human time. And the time called soon is a time that precedes the second coming of the Lord Jesus. It's a moment that precedes the rapture of the church. That's why this moment is so awaited, so awaited so eagerly. This moment is being um, followed by the Christians, by the faithful servants, and by the faithful church, because it is impossible not to associate the history of men with the prophetic time. It is impossible for us to cancel the history of man regarding of what is happening today in connection with the prophetic time of God. You know why? Because the prophecy, prophecy is fulfilled every day. The Word of God is fulfilled every day. And when it happens, those who follow the Word, those who leave the Word, they have been seeing signs of being fulfilled throughout the earth. The judgment of God are being manifested upon man. There's no way for us to annul this. And the more it happens, the more the prophecy is fulfilled, the more the prophetic time of God is fulfilled in our lives, in our time, we see the power of God. We see the control of God over all things. We see that man has a determined time. The creative work has a determined time. It has an end. It was already established. But within all of this, the redemptive work it came to carry man allow men to overcome all things. When the time of God is fulfilled in our lives, it is reason for us to glorify the Lord. It's not that we have joy in seeing what is taking place in the world. It is not that we have joy in seeing the defeat of people and seeing what we see today, the tsunami, Tsunami is killing people. We have no pleasure in it. We don't want this. But the judgment of God is upon the world. And those things happen to show the faithful church, to show to men that God is alive. And that the word of God is being fulfilled. And that the project of salvation of man is being established, independent on the desire and of the will of each one of us. But at the same time, it is reason for us, for us to glorify the Lord because when those things happen, it's, it is a sign that it is near the coming, second coming of the Lord Jesus. The history follows the prophetic and vice versa. And the, prof the prophecies follow history. Let me use here as an example the event that we're going to have here this week in a couple of days, Christmas. Christmas is an event is that eagerly awaited by lo lots of people in the 
evangelical world and the Christian world is one of the events that most awaited. Why this? Because Christmas brings to us great joy. Who doesn't like Christmas? Is there a child that doesn't like Christmas? I also love Christmas. Christmas is wonderful. Why? In Christmas you see happiness, we see families uh, gathered. In Christmas we see people that are solidary with one another. We see throughout the year things that throughout the year we don't see sometimes. Families sometimes they overcome barriers, they overcome difficulties. How can I say? They overcome the the uh, arguments that they may have w with them in order to be together. People travel from afar just to s spend time with the family. We see the houses illuminated, the stores filled with people. This is a day where you can give a gift. If you want to give me a gift, you just if you want, a, want information, uh, call me and I'll give you all my, my, my shirt size. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just call me and particular, privately, and I'll give you the size of my shoe, the size of my shirt. Christmas is for this. Christmas is a wonderful time. It's a happy moment. But biblica, biblically speaking, what Christmas is? Christmas is an intervention of God. Christmas Biblically speaking, for the faithful church is the great intervention of God that begins the project of salvation of, of man. Christmas is the birth of the Savior, the Messiah, is the birth of Jesus. And while the world annulled this moment as the world remains with the historical, as the world only keeps the feasts at this moment of the year. The faithful church lives this moment every moment because the faithful church is already inside of this project. The faithful church and the one who is faithful to God is already included on the project of salvation of man. That's why he gives so much worth to the birth of Jesus in his life every day. That's why this moment is so important. And Christmas cannot be forgotten. But not as the world celebrates. But as, as it is biblically awaited, which is the birth of the Savior of man in our hearts. If we make a parallel between Israel and the church, we will see two uh, distinct moments. If we look at what was happening in Israel when Jesus was born, we will see that it is happening today, the same thing. That's why Israel for us is so important. That's why Israel for us needs to awake in us something that many times we cancel, we annul. That's why when we look to Israel, we need to be awoken by God because biblically, the Israel that we await, the Jerusalem that we await is the heavenly Jerusalem. It's not the Jer Jerusalem that is geographic. It's not the nation of Israel, but it's the nation chosen by God the nation, which is the faithful church that has been prepared, worked on by the Holy Spirit to go to live in the heavenly Jerusalem. And if we look at what happened at that moment in which Jesus was born, we will see something interesting. The birth of Jesus was something that had been prophesied by the prophets. 
the birth of Jesus was something that was being awaited for, for, for just a few, but proclaimed to all. And when Jesus comes to the world, Israel lived its worst spiritual crisis. The kings no longer were careful to make the people live a spiritual life. The, sp the priests no longer had their function. They didn't have the min uh, priesthood ministry and to tell the people what God told them. The prophets, in the same way, they had already been silent, silenced. God was not speaking for more than 400 years in Israel. And there was no connection between God and Israel anymore. It was a time that was very dark, spiritually speaking. It was a terrible moment in Israel. It was a moment in which the entire project of God had been forsaken by the people. And Jesus comes exactly at this moment. And Jesus appears at this moment in which everyone was sleeping. The priests were sleeping. The religious were sleeping. Bethlehem was sleeping. Israel was sleeping. And you know who was waiting for the birth of Jesus? We read here was a small group of pa uh, shepherds, a small group of men that lived awaiting for the fulfillment of this prophecy. And while all the others were unaware, while all the others were living a moment without having any contact with the God of Israel. Imagine, how, how can you forget of a God that has done what God has done for the people of Israel? How can you forget of a God that opened up the, the Red Sea? How can you forget about a God that has always been at the disposal of His people? How can you forget a God that has performed miracles and wonders, all of it in favor of a nation? But that's what happened because he, they were have been unaware. Uh, better saying, they, they were not paying attention. They had been warned, but they forgot about the prophecy. They canceled the prophecy of God. What was described in the Bible, what has been described by the prophets, they were no longer waiting for it. They had been, uh, they didn't, didn't not believe the prophecies anymore. And it was exactly at this moment in which the prof the mess the Messiah comes. That's the moment in which Jesus came to the world to give man the means for man to once again go back to have fellowship with God. The moment of, of Christmas was this. The moment in which Jesus was born, the so called Christmas. And the time of Jesus was a moment like this. Today, if we look at the moment of the church, the time in which we live, the world also lives in this way. The world doesn't know what is happening. The world, the world does, doesn't give any worth to the prophecies. The world is not paying attention to the signs that are being fulfilled, to the judgment of God that every day is being fulfilled in the life of the church. The world is completely unaware, sleeping, to the great event that's about to happen. But in the midst of all of this, there's a small group. There's a small group that has been risen in the Pentecost. There's a small group, this group that has seen the signs. There's a small group that is receiving all the help, the assistance, and the resource from the part of God so that they may also see the fulfillment of the prophecy. They are no longer waiting for the birth of the Savior, but now the second coming of Jesus to the world to take a church, to be taken away from this world, to be raptured from this world, to live eternally in the arms of the Lord. And Christmas is this. May the Christmas serve to us so that this moment may allow us 
may be seen to us not only as history, but that Christmas may bring to you an awakening, and that the birth of Jesus, if he is not being born in you spiritually, so that may you may tonight, from this day forward, you open your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to cause Jesus to be born in your heart. And when it happens, you will begin to live wonderful moments in the presence of God. You will be carried by the Holy Spirit to live a life in prayer, to live a life of seeking the Lord, a life in fellowship with God. You begin to give worth to what is eternal. You begin to live giving worth to what is spiritual, what is important, what is what does not perish, what never runs out. Because everything that is part of the creative work has its determined time to expire. But but the but the redemptive work, the work that God does to give men an opportunity to redeem his life in Jesus. My hope is that you tonight uh, you may allow Jesus to be born in you and that you may live this moment in the presence of God. Don't do like don't act like the world acts. Don't give only worth to history, but give worth to what is prophetic. Give worth to what is eternal. Because only this way man will have the means to come to God. Only in Jesus man can present himself before the Lord because Jesus is the Savior of the world. He is the Messiah that Israel awaits to this day but has already come but is a, and is about to come back to ca take us to live a presence in the presence of the Father. May God bless us. Let us hear a song.
Let's be the hand of the Lord. Let's have a word of adoration to the name of the Lord. I want to praise your name, Lord, for the beauty of your holiness. <coughs> praise the Lord, because you gave your only Son to the cross of Calvary so that today we would have life and life in abundance. We praise the Lord, because Christmas in our hearts is every day. Because in our hearts there is peace, there is joy. Because we are privileged people. Because Jesus is in our lives. That's why we praise you for this night. We thank you, Lord, because truly your grace has been enough for us. We praise you for your revealed word, which is life for our lives. We exalt you, Lord, for this night. Because you are good towards us. You have done great things, calling us by our own names. And so we'll see you face to face, Lord. And you praise for this great joy in the name of the Lord Jesus. the church to stand up brother Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord hallelujah amen bless be the name of the Lord brother Jesus
I've read in the evangelical world, they have lost the purpose of a call. Because the evangelical world today, they have their eyes closed and their ears closed for what is prophetic. But the faithful church that has no name, it has a call, it has a mission. And its mission is to proclaim the coming of the Lord Jesus. The Lord has awoken us for this. And if you want to be part of this faithful church, open your heart up and allow the Holy Spirit to, to operate in your life. Let the Holy Spirit to confirm what God wants to do that only He can do in your life, which is to transform, which is to remove pain, to remove anguish, to remove sadness, to remove uncertainty, and to place one word, salvation. That's what God wants to do in your life tonight. May God bless you in a wonderful way. We're going to pray, bring the service to a close, and if you need an assistance, we are making ourselves available to you so that you may leave this place, leaving what is the prophecy and the project of salvation of God. Lord, we want at this moment to praise your name because we know, Lord, that to this point you have helped us and we praise the Lord for our call we praise the Lord for our, our awakening because one day you, we took us away from darkness we took us away from the deceit Lord and placed on a path that leads to eternity Lord and we praise the Lord because to this day your hands are and will remain upon our lives and that's why, Lord, we are happy. Receive our gratitude. Receive our service in adoration to your name. And take us home in peace. And so that we may have a week of, of victories in your presence. Is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gift of the Holy Spirit, be proud upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The congregation may sit down. We are now making ourselves available to you. If you desire, raise your hand or ask someone to raise their hands beside you. And the ushers, deacons, and pastors are he here at your disposal.